Yes, some lions indeed in astoundingly with some signal and not far from the wildebeest herd. Now this is a mating pair from the Salt Lick Pride and we know they're mating because we have, uh, well, we've seen them mating basically. And I think that she looks relatively hungry and she's just perked up and the rest of the pride is the other side of this sort of marshy spot and I don't think there'll be any signal near them. So I think what we're going to do is wait and see if she doesn't go hunting. Uh, often with a mating pair the female will go hunting, you know, it's exhausting work mating as a lion. Uh, many, many times a day it must be done. You can see the male completely exhausted. And she, uh, well, she looks a little bit like she could uh, eat something before the mm, new mating commences. So I think we'll sit with these two and wait and see what happens. There are two large groupings of wildebeest around here. One to the left of your screen and one, the one we were with, is just sort of behind us. And so rather like Scott was waiting with the cheetahs during the day, we are going to wait with these lions for a while at the night and see what happens. We'll give them a little while before we try the rest of the pride, but having seen where they are, I think that they're just not going to be able to give us any workable signal. She's looking up towards them, I wonder. Just listening carefully to see if they aren't some alarm calls. They're a long way from here, probably about 300 meters or so, about a thousand feet. And she might be listening to see if there isn't signs or sounds of a kill. Because she'll quite happily scavenge from the family. You can see night just starting to fall. What an astounding day uh, you've had there with those cheetahs. Isn't that amazing? Once they get, decide that they're going to hunt a herd of wildebeest, it's almost certain that they will ki kill. Hello, love. Hello, darling. What's for dinner? Oh, I got nothing yet. Oh, Rita, you say when there's a mating pair, do the other lions move off in order to give the lovers some space? Uh, Rita, I don't think it's anything quite like that, no. I think what happens is that these two become so preoccupied with each, with each other that the others just kind of get on with the rest of their lives. And he will sometimes try and separate her from the rest of the pride. You know, he'll kind of block her way. And then I suppose by default they do become separated often not very far away from the rest of the pride and she's looking straight towards them now and in fact she's looking at a jackal there's a jackal off to the left there can you see it there Manu? I'm not sure if the... can you see it? way or... no 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 much further left in the clearing behind us there in there somewhere there is a little pair of jackals, and that's what she's looking at. There you go. Well spotted. And there's a, a, there is actually a carcass there, an old carcass. That is uh, smelling very high indeed. And that's what the jackal's eating. Lion is licking her chops, but I don't think the chances the chances of her catching jackal for dinner are well highly unlikely. Here we are. See, licking her chops. I definitely think she's quite peckish. She's watching the little jackals now. The jackals are very fast, so they would be able to escape from her almost always. Although lions do take their toll, we know, of course, that horrendous scene we saw with Brent when at Juma, when the lions got hold of a wild dog pup. Dreadful, dreadful stuff. So they do take their toll on the canids out here. Right, now, either this is a prelude to more mating, or perhaps it'll be a prelude to hunting. We're just putting on the infrared now, it's getting a bit dark, so things are going to go from vibrant technicolor to black and white. Not sure why she's licking her lips quite so uh, enthusiastically. She looks like she might be sick, actually. 
Well, that'll make her definitely peckish after that. Now, that is the thinnest belly I have seen on a lion during this migration season. And I think this lion is about to have a vom. That's disgusting. Oh, goodness, here it comes. He's not put off in the slightest. I certainly am. Right, now what's going to happen here? Oh no, the IR lights on. Yep. Yes, they are. Is the is the IR filter on? Yes. Is it on full auto? Yep. Yeah. It is quite dark though, I must say. Anyway, um, let's reverse back a little bit. They're going to mate. Here we go. Here we go. I must tell you, the smell around here is not that of a kind of... Um, there's no romantic smell around here. It smells like rotting meat and lion dung, which is quite the worst smell in the world. Yeah, I think she's hungry now. I'm not sure this mating malarkey is holding her fascination, really, at the moment. And if you can hear that low, throaty growl. No, go away, she says. I have a headache. Manu, now that is black. We can see nothing. What's happened there? Manu? They're mating. There we go. Romance in the dusk. Often, you know, they mark their territory like that, as the mating happens, the males do, just to sort of assert themselves. It almost looks like they feel slightly inadequate afterwards from the aggressive response they receive, so they mark their territory to show how big and tough they are. Marvellous. Well, I'm glad we got to see that. Now what I think I might try and do is sneak around to the others just to see if we've got signal. I'm 90% sure we won't. And so while I do that, let's head across to Scott and find out how his cheetah's, um, well, migration banquet is going.